This is Doc Nyland bringing you a video on Orsted's Law. Hans Christian Orsted is the stylish fellow in the illustration, and he apparently wore medals in his portraits. He was born in 1777 and is credited for making the revolutionary connection between electricity and magnetism. In this video, I will begin by introducing Orsted's Law and then apply the concept to a practice problem. This can be a tricky topic for students, so be sure to pay close attention and let's get started. Orsted's law states that when electric current passes through a substance, a magnetic field is produced around the substance. Now, since the magnetic field is being created by electric current rather than by a permanent magnet, this type of field is typically called an electromagnetic field. But let's look at an example. Imagine that we connect a battery to a medium resistance wire, as seen in the illustration. What we know is that conventional current will begin to flow clockwise around the circuit, from the battery's positive terminal to its negative terminal. Now, Orsted's law states that an electromagnetic field will be created whenever current flows. So I have represented this in my illustration. Notice that the field loops around the wire circularly. Now, fields are always vectors, so this leaves us with two important questions. First, how strong is the electromagnetic field? And second, in what direction does the electromagnetic field point? Let's start with strength. The strength of any magnetic field is typically represented by a capital B. So it doesn't matter if it's a permanent magnet creating the field, or electricity creating the field, it will always be represented by a capital B. In the same way, the standard unit for magnetic field strength is the Tesla, named after the physicist, not the car company. In the formula, we can see that electromagnetic field strength is directly proportional to the electric current in the wire and inversely proportional to the distance from the wire. You may also notice that the strength depends directly on something called magnetic permeability. Now, what does that mean? Well, magnetic permeability is a characteristic of the substance through which an electromagnetic field travels. In my example, we can assume that the substance surrounding my wire is air, which has a magnetic perme permeability very close to a vacuum. But now imagine that our wire was wrapped around a piece of iron. Believe it or not, the electromagnetic field inside the circuit would now be 5,000 times stronger than it was before. That's because the magnetic permeability of iron is 5,000 times greater than that of a vacuum. But let's move on to the direction of the field. Well, remember that the field circles around the wire. The direction of the loops are not random, though and actually point in specific directions. So what are these directions? We need a method for figuring it out. You may have noticed from my illustration that there are things happening in all three dimensions. Because of this, we need a method for representing three-dimensional relationships. So I introduce to you the right hand rule. It is very simple. Your right hand thumb points in the direction of the motion which in our case is the current. Now, if you curl your right hand fingers around the wire, the curve of your fingers represents the direction of the electromagnetic field. So let's try it. Let's focus on the right end of my circuit. Notice that the current is flowing downward in this section. Hold out your right hand and point your thumb down. Now curl your right hand fingers as if you're trying to grasp the wire. What you should notice is that your curled fingers point left when they are in front of the wire and that they point to the right when they curl behind the wire. In other words, the direction of your curled finger should resemble the direction of the red field loops in the illustration. Try it. Now in physics, sometimes vectors point into the page and out of the page. In mathematics, they call this the z-axis. A vector pointing into the page is represented by a circle with an x inside, kind of like the back of an arrow. 
a vector pointing out of the page is represented by a circle with a dot inside, kind of like the front of an arrow. You should notice that the right hand rule is still true in my illustration, even when you just use in and out arrows. Pause the video and see that it's true. Now let's move on to a practice problem. Now please pause the video and read the prompt. Now in my illustration, there is a black wire carrying 22 amps of current to the right. At 3.2 meters above the wire is a dot representing the distance of interest. Now because I know the value of the current and the distance from the wire, and we can assume that the space around the wire is composed of air, I can calculate the strength of the electromagnetic field. According to the formula from before, we find that the strength of the field at that distance is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. Now that we know the strength, let's move on to finding the direction. Remember that the right hand rule tells us that if we point our right hand thumb in the direction of the current, the curl of our fingers represents the direction of the electromagnetic field. So point your thumb to the right and curl your fingers as if you are trying to grasp the wire. What we find is that the field flows up behind the wire and down directly in front of the wire. And because of this, the field must be pointing out of the page anywhere directly above the wire, and the field must be pointing into the page anywhere directly below the wire. So in conclusion, the electromagnetic field at that location has a strength of 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla directed out of the page, or as we call it in physics and mathematics, the positive Z direction. Thank you for watching my video on Orsted's Law. I hope you find it helpful in your journey through electromagnetism. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media.